Hey guys, the last couple of weeks have been quite eventful for quantum computing. From the former head of quantum computing at Google starting his new job, to Honeywell and IonQ dropping two ion trap bombshells. Watch this video to find out what happened. Earlier this year, the quantum computing community was shocked when John Martinez announced that he was leaving the Google Quantum AI Lab, where he led Google's effort of building a quantum computer. John Martinez received his PhD in experimental physics from the University of California, Berkeley in 1987. John Martinez is a world-renowned researcher working on superconducting qubits, and in 2014, he announced that Google had hired him and his lab to build the first quantum computer. Five years later, in October 2019, Martinez and his team announced to the world that they had achieved quantum supremacy on their 53 qubit device. Which means that they have successfully implemented a task on a quantum computer that no classical computer can do in any reasonable amount of time. I've actually made a whole video on quantum supremacy, linked in the description. In April 2020, Martinez surprisingly resigned from his role at Google to the confusion of the whole quantum computing community. Now we know what he's up to next. Martinez moved all the way to Sydney, Australia to join Silicon Quantum Computing. The startup was founded by Professor Michelle Simmons in 2017 to build a quantum computer based on silicon, the same material we're using to build the chips used in classical computers today. To realize qubits, they're using a completely different approach compared to Google and IBM. They're placing individual phosphor atoms in a silicon substrate, building so-called quantum dots, where the spin of a single electron of this phosphor is used as a qubit. These types of qubits promise very long coherence times and high fidelity, which means that if this technology is scalable, it will give IBM and Google superconducting qubits a real run for their money. For now though, they're aiming to build a 10 qubit prototype by 2023. The fact that the former head of Google's quantum AI lab is joining the team gives this technology a massive confidence boost and I am very excited for the future. Next piece of news. In late September, Honeywell announced that they had achieved a quantum volume of 128 on their Iron Trap quantum computer, taking the lead from IBM, who achieved a quantum volume of 64 just a few weeks earlier. The quantum volume is calculated by successfully executing a random quantum circuit of the same width and depth, so the same number of qubits and layers of C0 gates, and calculating 2 to the power of that number. So for the quantum volume of 128, this means that Honeywell successfully executed a random circuit with a depth of 7 on 7 qubits, since 2 to the power 7 is 128. Now this sounds very impressive, but just a day later, IonQ announced that they had built a quantum computer with 32 ion trap qubits that could achieve a quantum volume of over 4 million, though without actually showing it. Now I think the marketing department just calculated 2 to the power 32, which is this number, without understanding that you first need to successfully run a circuit of depth 32 on the device. Nevertheless, my understanding is that Honeywell's quantum volume was limited by the number of qubits they have. So in principle, if the qubits from IonQ are comparable in quality, they should be able to easily achieve a higher quantum volume than Honeywell, which would give them the title of having the most powerful quantum computer today. Though that is all just speculation. Hey guys, super short video today. I hope you still enjoyed it. So please give it a like and subscribe for more quantum computing content. I have some ideas for a new project for the channel that I will be sharing with you in the coming weeks. So stay tuned.